Wazi, what a pleasure to have you on the Sports Editor. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Really excited to chat about your career and, and what you've been up to lately. So thank you so much for your time. But Wazi, um, retirement, how are you handling it? Um, did you feel you called it the right time? How are things going with you? Um, thank you for having me um, on, on, your, on, your, on your Zoom call. I almost said show. But anyway, retirement has, has, has been great at, this, um, at the moment. Um, it's, uh, always, it's, it's something that I'm not used to, but I, I always knew that it was, it, it was coming. And, and I'm embracing it. Um, and uh, the wife is very happy because there's more time at home now. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough, fair enough. But I hope you're keeping yourself busy. <laughs> but it's good, Lawazi. And we're going we're gonna to get into that a bit later. But just, a, you know, looking at your, your shirt, it made me think, well, if you weren't playing rugby, what sport would you be playing? I'd, uh, Devin is very hard. That's why I'm wearing a vest. Uh, <laughs> I think I was doing soccer. I, I, I really enjoyed soccer um, growing up. Um, I think actually soccer is a sport that I played before before rugby. So soccer was the only sport. I played a bit of cricket. Uh, I was bowling at a very young age. But cricket didn't really grasp uh, me or interest me a lot. But soccer soccer was, was a sport I think um, I enjoyed because you could play soccer anyway. Play soccer in the streets, anywhere as long as there was a soccer ball. <laughs> That's excellent. But soccer does teach you a lot of good skills. So now I really get what you're saying. It's really, very good. But we, we're going to talk a bit about your, your Sharks career. And it's about 175 Curry Cup points and 185 Super Rugby uh, points. But um, we, you scored a lot of good tries. It's hard to pick one which is your best. Um, but there were also times when you literally ran from your own trial line and scored. And not just once, Lawazi. I mean, you must have been, well, you are one fit guy, but how were you able to do that? Like, not just once, not just twice, a number of times. You, you had a high work rate. Would you put it down to a high work rate? I, I, I think every, if you speak to any, any wing, um, They'll tell you they, they get so excited when there's there's like open space or a, a lot of um, running meters uh, just to showcase your speed because <laughs> um, we work a lot on our speed. So the moment you get you get to intercept or um, a try opportunity from your own try line, your eyes just just get wide open and and and, and you just enjoy the moment, I guess and. And um, I think obviously it, it goes in with a lot of hard work off the field and, and, and just trying to improve your, um, your skills and, and, and get involved in, in one way or another on the rugby field. Now tell me, when, when you've made a run and you, you've hit the gap and you, you're going and then everyone's cheering, I mean, you so good up in the moment, do you actually hear the crowd or is it just your adrenaline kicking and you just going? I mean, the crowd obviously adds some motivation. Actually, I think the crowd has a lot of motivation because because mm -hmm. that drives you, and 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 that can carry you to to the other side. And also, I think sometimes you you because you, you don't have eyes at the back of your head, and and when they scream louder, then you're like, okay, maybe there's someone who's trying to catch up to me, mm -hmm. and then I need to go, <laughs> I need to go quicker. <laughs> so so now the the crowds are we're, we're always everything and. And they're, they're always motivate you to do better. And they, with the adrenaline also, um, I, I think it was just a, it, always a great, great mixture of crowd and adrenaline and the hard work. And, and uh, I guess the, the rewards of scoring a try and helping your, your, your team win also. Mm, absolutely. But Joe, you, you definitely were a proper team player and... You know, the, the Sharks was your home for, for many years. Um, but, you know, they obviously believe in you. And I think it's fair to say that you really, you paid your dues to the franchise. You were really, really good to the, the club because your performances were there day in and day out. Yes. Yes. Um, I, 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 playing for the Sharks was, was always my dream. So when it, mm. when it happened, um, 
I just wanted to, to to play for the Sharks as many games as as I can, and and to to get the opportunity to do it to play um, over a hundred um, Super Rugby games was something special for me, and 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 it was an honor and a privilege mm. um, to do it in Durban and uh, and. Uh, in a place that, that I loved apart from home. Um, so um, the Sharks gave me the opportunity to do it in Durban. <laughs> nah, it's excellent. You know, and I think they really de- developed your, your game and you did well because you progressed to eventually play for South Africa as well. Um, but it, it, it's quite interesting, Lawazi. I get the impression that you sort of just go about your business quietly. You just do what you need to do. You work hard, head down. Um, but I'm sure you're, you're very happy when you got called up to play for South Africa, it must have been a jolly good moment for you. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to think that I'm a very quiet person. <laughs> and um, some of my teammates will disagree. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was very special. I remember it was um, actually the 2010 final, literally like 10 minutes. Oh, well, when you got into the change room celebrating the Curry Cup win, uh, here in Durban um, against the the old forwards, the Stormers. I mean, the Western <laughs> Province. So, uh, and then Plumtree was a coach, and then it, he he told me that um, I had just been included in the Springbok uh, wow. Springbok team. Wow! And that was that was also something. Ooh, very special. You know, this is this this like experiences that you can't really put in words, but to to be called to play for for your national team is is really something special. Um, and and fortunately for me, my family was here uh, to to watch the the, the Kaya Cup final. Uh, my my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, was was also there. So it was it was it was something special, man. No, absolutely. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think you definitely worn the Sharks uh, shirt and the Springbok shirt, South Africa shirt, with a lot of pride. And uh, you've really given your best from what I, I've seen, especially watching you a few times at the Sharks Stadium as well. So it's been, it's been really, really good. Um, but talking about interesting moments, I think yeah, you, you were playing for the Sharks against the British and Irish Lions. And <laughs> you know which one I'm going to talk about because, I mean, that, that's, that is iconic, what you did there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask you... <laughs> But I mean, you tackled one of the best centers in the world in Brian O'Driscoll, um, and he didn't even see you coming. Um, that, that must have been one of your best sort of defending, if I can call it defending moments ever. Yes, I, um, I, I think I, I always believe that like, everything happens for a reason. And yeah. I think I, I played 2008 uh, Kyle Cup, which I made my debut. But, but I really like breakthrough the following year to, to the Super Rugby team and I was in and out of um, the Vodacom Cup start at that time. Um, Vilda Beast, was called the Vilda Beast. No, yeah, yeah. But like, like you said, man, I, just, I just worked harder, I kept my head, head down because I knew what I was working hard for. And, and, and I think that moment kind of people like, knew who I was. Mm, <laughs> at that mm. time, um, and and to to do it uh, with Brian O'Driscoll, <laughs> who was also actually one of my heroes, like like uh, growing up, um, was was very special. And I've I'd, I'd never thought I'd, I'd play against the British and Irish Lions, but, but for me to to play it and and do something like that was 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 kind of very special. And uh, I remember there was a, I think there was a book that came out. Um, that covered the whole British and Irish Lions tour, and and there was a picture of me there making that that tackle, and and um, I think the the writing below it was like whatever happens in this young man's career, he will never forget this this moment, and I've I've, I've never did I'll, I'll never forget that moment. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. special. Yeah, no, very very special. Yeah. You definitely yeah. put your name on the, on, the, on the map there, if I can say that, when, when he did that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, but, Joel, I was just to add more about you. You seem to have a sort of a, a no-nonsense approach to, to the game. Like, you know what's expected of you. 
And do you feel that sort of helped you, I could almost say, execute your, your game plan? Because you knew what was expected of you. You knew what you had to do. Did it help you get the most out of your, your or each game, I should say? Yes, I, 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 I've always wanted to, to, to like, if someone trusts you to, to do something and puts you on the field and, and trust your, your God-given talent, then you have to like kind of um, repay them or, or actually repay them in, in your performance and, and earn, earn their trust. Mm. Um, and, and obviously the trust of your, of your, of your teammates. So it, it has always been like that for me. And, and I think my family and, and the people that, that were, have always been rooting me for, from day one, um, the support that they showed me, they showed me, I, I always felt like I always have to give my all. Mm. There, there's, there's no two ways about it. And, and, and obviously the talent that, that I've been blessed with, I, I, I have to <laughs> like kind of showcase it there. But, but I think for me, it got to a point where talent wasn't, wasn't enough. Because I've seen so many talented guys, um, which I felt like they were better than me, and 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 for me to um, to kind of move it to the next level or make it to the Sharks, there was no two ways about it. That I have to work hard on my own. Um, whether I wake up in the morning, run three Ks, and then go to classes at the Sharks Academy. And then in the afternoon, do hill sprints or pull tires, whatever I could do to get me to the point that I wanted to get and, and show the appreciation for the people that rooted me from day one and also the coach that's going to give me the opportunity that he can trust me, I can do what he wants me to do. I think that, that has always been my, my motor, if, if I can put it that way. And... That always has like driven me to to be a better player. Mm. No, definitely. Yes. Well, talk, you know, you're talking about like working hard and getting things right there. Um, I don't know how you did it, Lawazi, but you'd sprint, you know, in terms of attacking, then sprint back and defend, and then sprint and attack again. Man, how like how big is your your fuel tank? Because it was just impressive <laughs> to see how you, how you would do it time and time again, and also like from a standstill position. You just accelerate. And I know there's training involved, obviously, but you were just jolly good at it, Lawazi. And they've obviously fine-tuned that skill. I'd say they obviously worked on that specifically. But first of all, I mean, how, fit, how big was your tank? <laughs> how did you do what you did where you could just run up and down time and time again, attack and defend? It was brilliant to see, Lawazi. I, 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 I've always... I always um... So for, for any rugby player, or I guess any, any sports person, they'll tell you pretty much one of the hardest things is, is, is uh, defending. Because you don't have a ball. Um, you don't control the ball. They have the ball. So, mm. so it's very hard. So if, you, if, if mentally you're not strong when you're defending, then you're pretty much not going to last. So I, I, I always kind of enjoyed defending and, and being able to run someone down you know what i'm, what I'm trying to say so, yeah, yeah. But, but it's always been like what i enjoyed and then flip it on on a take i think everyone gets excited when they've got a ball in their hand mm-hmm. no, <laughs> in a space so the adrenaline always kicks in and and i think your good given talent takes over but uh i think the the, the fitness and that you do on your own um, the recovery you do during the week, that then gets shown on the field. Absolutely, absolutely. But Lawazi, you've obviously did well, and, and I think you were a threat to a lot of the teams. As soon as they saw your name on the team sheet, they got a bit scared. Um, but then there must have also been one or two guys that you have to defend against where you thought, okay, game on. <laughs> Here we go. This is, this is going to be a tough one. Who, who, gave you, who put you under pressure a little bit once in a while? Uh, to be honest, I, I I think the New Zealand New Zealand wingers they are uh, mm. mm. most most of them have always been been like trouble. Um, 
I remember my, I think I made my debut against Joe Rokotoko and I was like, geez, <laughs> I've, I've always watched this guy. <laughs> and then now he's, I must try and stop him. And and, and I think the, the, the amazing thing about mostly like the New Zealand wingers is as big as they are, they can always run around you and they can like hand you off and they can bounce you. So, so then you always get a headache like the night before you play them. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but I think also more like Rio Etlon, like the rival, little rivalry I had with him, um, cause I mean, he could step anyone and, mm. and he had so much pace also. And I, I, I always enjoyed playing against him. I think it was one of the best um, when playing against him. No, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. But yeah, it's good to see that, that um, rugby's up and running and there's some games going on. Uh, it's been very, very good. I think the Franchise Cup is, is a, a first thing. It's, it's good for a lot of guys. But let's first talk about the shock setup at the moment. Um, looking good. Happy with everything? You know, what do you think? How, how's the squad looking, so to say, especially in terms of the Franchise Cup and looking ahead with other competitions? I, I think the, 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 the whole squad is in a good place. If you think about it, last year before COVID, um, we were leading. I was still there. I hadn't retired at the time. <laughs> <laughs> we were leading in the, in the uh, Super Rugby table. So I think there's a, there's a, it's exciting times. There's a, Good blend of of uh, of young players, um, experienced players, World Cup winners, um, and 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 exciting like the way the way that they 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 run around a minute training, um, the effort they put into trainings, and um, I, I literally think that uh, the Shark Shop is in good hands, and and we, obviously with the coaching staff that. Um, always like literally backs the young players and 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 obviously experienced players and and try to to get the best out of them um, and and I I think the the future is is really bright for them. Yeah, and Sean Everett Sean Everett has extended his contract as well, so it's it's looking good, looking looking very very good. Um, yes, yes. But now Pro 16 is happening as well. And now if you would you ever consider coming out of retirement? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. I, I think one of the, one of the reasons were like that um made me I, I can't I think the decision easy, a bit easy. Um during lockdown, like when we, we when we trained and or, like just during Kai Cup, before Kai Cup. And and when you, when you, I get back home, like my knees will be kind of sore. And, and and I always told myself that I I, I won't retire until someone runs like right. runs around. Um, that hasn't happened. I was waiting for that, but it never really happened. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but the body man was 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 taking the talk, and and. I, I think at, at that time, I mean, I, I I played my games and I've given my jersey what I could, but I felt I felt like the body wasn't responding as as it used to. Mm, no, fair enough, fair enough. I think if if some teammates like JP Peterson, you know, heard that he hasn't run around you, he'd argue and say, "Well, I can run through you. Let's have a go." <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he tried a he tried a couple of times. <laughs> Running through me, but also he could never. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, excellent, excellent, Ravazi. Very, very good. Um, but growing up, obviously, you said that soccer was a big sport, and you've but you have gotten to play for the Sharks in South Africa. But who was your sort of rugby idol? Did you have anyone that you looked up to and thought, yeah, this person is just an inspiration for me for rugby? I really hope to mold my game, sort of like this person. Um, I, I never really watched rugby until I uh, I um, I started playing, which was around grade eleven, two thousand and three. Um, and I think I watched the World Cup, um, watching like the game there, but um, um, never really like paid a lot of attention to it. 
Um, but I think when I when I 2005, yeah, and and so so like break times be like they use they would be at like half past one. I'd literally go to the computer room and um, and and watch Brian Habana's tries mm. um, against Australia. <laughs> I don't know how many times I watched them, like every almost every day I'd, I'd, I'd watch those two tries which is scored against Australia in Australia sure well, I think one would turn over and skull Baker just passed to him and he ran all the way to the yeah. take it and try writing him down but obviously it was Brian Havana and and I think the 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 crazy thing about that is is when I made my debut 2010 um so unfortunately he got injured to put Brian Havana he had a he had an eagle and and it, it kind of brought me like into tears thinking about like five years ago I used to watch this guy at, at, at Porto Tech and and I think from 2005 until 2010, you know, a lot of guys that played in the number 11 jerseys, in the number 11 jersey, left wing. So for me to go from watching the guy and then five years later, kind of playing the number 11 jersey, making my debut. Um, and he also made his debut in the end of the year too. So he was one of the guys that, that I, I looked up to. And and I, I think when I read, when, not I think, but also when I retired, he was a, also one of the guys that sent me a message and and um, wished me well for, for my next, <laughs> um, whatever I get my hands into after retirement. So he was the one guy that I, I, I looked up to. And obviously, John Aloma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you made and that was, was no, two excellent, excellent choices there. Well done. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's, there's, there's been some really good players on the wing for I think mainly New Zealand and South Africa. That's yeah, those are two examples. Really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing talent. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. I still think it's the great, greatest rugby rivalry in the world, South Africa and New Zealand. And yeah, I don't think it's gonna it fall away anytime soon. That's that's a proper proper contest that yeah. I, I I think also even even super rugby, like when you when you, you knew that when you played um, the New Zealand teams, like it, it is just a, a rivalry that that is mm-hmm. unmatched, and and you you can't be on your B game. You always have to be on your mm-hmm. A game. And when you beat when you beat New Zealand team, like I remember when you beat uh, the Crusaders and Crusaders with fourteen men. Jeez, we celebrated like <laughs> we won Super Rugby. <laughs> yeah. And and no a lot of teams have, have, have beaten Crusaders in Crusaders and. And for us to do the 14 men, ooh, that's yeah. something special. Yeah, really. no, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, because just talking about us, well, obviously, Pro 16 has been on the topic for a lot of guys talking, talking Pro 16, whatever, whatever. But you're right, the Crusaders are a proper side. Actually, all those New Zealand sides are really good. So imagine if one day they created almost like a super league. So like your Crusaders played against Bath, for example, and the Sharks played against... Uh, Worcester Warriors or whatever it is, that would be like, but I don't know if they'll ever get there because of time constraints, but that would be interesting to see because I think uh, the South African teams and New Zealand teams are really good. I think it would be very interesting to see and and um, I think it goes back to the international rivalry from all this northern and southern side. Mm. Um, but I honestly think that the southern hemisphere teams would would do very well um, yeah. in, when they tested against the, those teams. Uh, but um, I mean, like those are like your Ulster, your Monsters. Those are are also big names in the Northern Hemisphere. So, yeah. so it'll be very interesting to yeah. see how we'd go. No, absolutely, absolutely. That's brilliant. But Lawazi, are you still aiming to have a chat with Tiger Woods? When I was starting. <laughs> Oh, same man. Um, <laughs> sad what happened to him. Um, yeah. And and I think uh, I've, I've I've always like funny thing is when I started playing golf, obviously uh, as a fun thing. Um, that that uh, you always watch his videos and you think ah, I can do that, but then you, when you get to the course, you're like, oh, maybe I was just dreaming. <laughs> 
but I think it's one of the greatest athletes to ever live. So I I, I hope so. Maybe one day. Yeah. You, you know, you'll never know. You never know. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, let's hope it does happen. Let's hope it does happen. Um, but you are talking about, about change and things like that. It, it seems that the British and Irish Lions tour is going to head over to the UK, which is it's quite sad. Um, I don't know. What do you what do you think the outcome is going to be there? So my thing is that we've always toured very good when we the end of the year tour. Mm. Um, so so I I think it'll be it'll be fifty fifty. But I think we 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 can pull it um, we can pull it off and and um, I think obviously with with uh, Rossi and the coaching staff having a lot of experience in the northern hemisphere, I think that that will work on 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 us um, uh, doing very well that side. But but I think the Springboks can 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 do it. I mean we just won the World Cup in Japan, which is very humid. Uh, clearly, they had a plan to do that, so um, I think um, the, the Springboks will have a plan for for the Northern Hemisphere. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I hope I hope the competition goes ahead. But let's let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. But Lawazi, just out of interest, sake, what are you doing with yourself at the moment? I believe you're involved with the Sharks Academy as well, keeping you busy. Yes. So so, Dick had, had called me a, a couple of. Um, before I retired, while I was actually doing Curry Cup, and he wanted me to join um, the International Academy that he runs. So um, I said yes. Um, um, so what he wanted to do is obviously um, approach, um, not approach, but grow all types of um, sporting code, not just rugby, but other codes, soccer, um, netball, um, and um, uh, villages and the, all the like, try to reach all the different zone where where um, where there's not much uh, facilities. So I said yes, obviously I'd, I'd love to do that. And then um, and then there was an opportunity to to take the rugby side of the Sharks Academy recently. Um, so he also called me over. It's like hey, we need to work on this. And there's uh, youngsters. I, I had the experience. I came through the the Sharks Academy. So when he said we we had an opportunity, I I grabbed it both hands. No, ah, excellent, Lawazi. That's that's so brilliant. Good. I'm, I'm glad. It's always good to see players giving back to the game and how much you love the game. Because the guys are always, <coughs> excuse me, getting involved in academies and things like that just shows what had what the game's done for you as well. So that's really really good to see. Well done, Lawazi. Really good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, cool, man. Uh, I don't know if this is talk or, or there's any truth here, but you're a bit of a, a gamer as well. Do you play computer games and things like it on PlayStation? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have a bit of a, a game or two. Um, apart from, I, I think like throughout the, the rugby career, you always need something to to take your, your mind off the yeah. game. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 and which was, 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 Encouraged by by all the the coaches because you can't always be thinking of of rugby the whole time. <laughs> so so golf and 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 PlayStation was one of those uh, take your mind off the game type of um, hobbies. And and yeah, I, I actually became very good. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and 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 FIFA, uh, I quite enjoyed FIFA. Which, which, uh, <laughs> I, I think we there's still a lot of rivalry. Also, I um I made the weekend the the FUT championships. Ooh, <laughs> and that's where that's where you get like obviously I think you know that's where you get to play anyone in the world. And then and I think I, I got maybe a guy that literally do does it professionally. And oh wow, he he, he kind of made me not want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> He, he he embarrassed me very much. So I haven't tried to qualify for the weekend league ever again after that. I was like, okay, you know what? There's people who do this on a daily basis. I don't yeah. do it on a daily basis. I just do it in my spare time. So yeah, I am I am a game man. I enjoy gaming a lot. Well, excellent. I'm glad you've got a good hobby and being outdoors is important. So it's good. It's really, really good. 
Well, Awazi, it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being on the show and chatting and talking rugby again in your career. Wishing you well in future. And I really trust the academy is going to go well because it sounds like you're surrounded by good people as well. So all the best, Awazi. May you go from strength to strength. Thank you very much, man. Um, I appreciate um, the chat, even though it, it kind of took a while postponing and everything. But um, yeah. thanks a lot for the chat. And um, anytime you want to chat, man, just let me know. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thanks, Awazi. Okay, cool, man. Sure, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Cheers, bud. Nawazi, go well, my man. All the best.